you have been lied to. Computer science is not software engineering. In fact, you can be amazing at computer science and be a terrible software engineer or struggle in computer science and be a great software engineer. But for some reason, society keeps acting like they're the same exact thing. Imagine saying, yeah, that soccer guy, Messi, Ronaldo, same person or LeBron, Michael Jordan, same basketball dude. It's blasphemous. And in this video, I'm gonna expose the truth, the real differences between computer science and software engineering, why even some of the best computer science students can't land software jobs, how you can actually break into software engineering, and which field, computer science or software engineering, AI will actually replace. So sit back, take notes, and let's get started. So a long time ago, I actually fell for this lie. So for college, I got into Georgia Tech for computer science. But before committing, I decided to visit the campus to see what life there was really like. I walked around, talked to some students, we got to conversations, and they told me about their big tech internships, working at places like Amazon and Google. And one guy mentioned he was building features for Amazon Music. Another was on a machine learning team at Google. And hearing names like Amazon and Google casually tossed around as places that students could work at was insane to me. And being this naive little high school senior, I was like, whoa, Georgia Tech computer science is the pipeline into big tech software engineering. So in my head, the path was clear. I studied computer science here, and in a few years, I'll be at one of those companies doing software engineering work. So I committed. I chose Georgia Tech and I showed up for my very first semester as a freshman in computer science, ready to code and start building software. But instead of Java or Python, my first class was linear algebra and then discrete math. And so I'm staring at these PQ truth tables, logic proofs, and set theory, one math heavy, theory heavy course after another, and I hated it. I wanted to build applications, not mathematical abstract proofs. And this math wasn't just math, it was hard math. The kind with more letters than numbers, the kind where you spend an hour proving why one equals one, the kind where you're calculating the number of unique permutations of the word Mississippi and wondering literally why anyone cares. And I remember I remember sitting there thinking, is this what software engineering is like? Did I mess up? Did I pick the wrong major? But then fast forward about a month, it was hiring season. And I was applying for software engineering internships, talking to recruiters and prepping for interviews. And it wasn't until then that the disconnect really became clear. The interviewers did not care at all about the classes I was taking. They didn't care about my GPA. They didn't care about PQ truth tables or mathematical proofs. They cared about what languages could I code it? Could I reverse a string? They cared how well I could debug an algorithm and solve problems like an engineer. And this was more in tune to what I was expecting software engineering to be like. And this is exactly what those upperclassmen who worked at Google and Amazon from before understood. They understood how to play the software engineering game, not the computer science game. And once I finally understood that, my mindset completely shifted. My grades in computer science classes started to slip, but I didn't really care about them anymore. My goal wasn't to be great at computer science, it was to break into software engineering. And once I optimized for that, I myself landed an Amazon software engineering internship as a college freshman that year. Now, you're probably wondering, what exactly did you figure out? So let's clear it up. Computer science versus software engineering. Computer science is the study of computation. It's pretty much behind the scenes of what happens inside of a computer. It covers algorithms, data structures, operating systems, programming languages, and yes, a lot of math. If you major in computer science, you can expect courses like discrete math, linear algebra, architecture, object-oriented programming, and computing theory because the degree is designed to give you a deep understanding of how computers and information work at a fundamental level. Software engineering, on the other hand, is a branch of computer science, and this is more of a defined career path. You can major in software engineering, but it's typically seen as a job title. And here you use principles from computer science and actually apply them to build products or applications. That means actually writing code, creating websites, creating applications. For example, my friend who worked at Amazon Music might have worked on creating a music recommendation system or a friendly UI since he's a software engineer. Computer science, software engineering is the difference between theory versus application. So computer science is like studying medicine in a classroom while software engineering is like being a doctor in the hospital. And here's actually where the difference in career prospects really come in. So a computer science degree can lead to many different paths, research, academia, artificial 
artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, data science, hardware design, and with a slight caveat, even software engineering. That's because computer science is broad in science and theory and can be applied in a lot of different domains. Software engineering, on the other hand, is much narrower. You're being trained to become a software engineer, nothing else. And that's where the problem begins for a lot of computer science students. Computer science on its own is not good enough to make you a software engineer. A lot of things like React.js, backend frameworks, databases, and shipping code using CICD, you barely get any exposure in university in a traditional computer science program. And this gap really blindsides so many students, especially in this market. And it's actually the reason many computer science graduates in this market end up jobless. They graduate knowing how to analyze an algorithm, but they never built a real web application from scratch. They've never built with modern frameworks, dealt with production bugs, or collaborated in a real code base. Plus, timing-wise, it's just terrible right now. Back when I graduated, employers would be fine taking a chance on you. The mentality was, you have a computer science degree, so you know how to code. You can probably figure out how to code in the software engineering environment. If not, we'll teach you or we'll take a chance on you. But today, the market is way too competitive for that. Companies aren't looking to train you from scratch. AI is competing against you. Other graduates already have those skills and employers want people who can start contributing from day one. Employers want junior engineers who have the skills of a senior engineer while paying them the salary of an intern. So you can't afford to just be a computer science student, you have to be a software engineer. So begs the question, what do you actually do to break into software engineering? Well, let's talk. One, master the fundamentals of building applications. Because computer science is so math, theory, and algorithms focused, while software engineering is more application project focused, you need to learn how to build using front-end and back-end frameworks. I recommend learning a framework like React.js through resources like Free Code Camp or the Odin project, and pair that with back-end skills like Django or Flask. Then create a full stack project like a Pomodoro application, for example, which is a simple timer that helps you with project management. You'll learn a lot. And the beauty of this project in particular is you actually become more productive using the project work that you did. Plus, if you can create projects and deploy them to say, for example, Vercel, recruiters will be able to actually see your work live and maybe be even inclined to hire you. But if you're looking for project ideas, definitely check out this GitHub repo right here. It's called Project Based Learning, and they help you learn how to code while building a project, but if you're a little more advanced, check out the Build Your Own X repo, which will give you more ambitious projects that are actually more portfolio worthy. Two, get comfortable with real world developer tools. In school, you mostly learn how to code, but that's like learning how to drive in an empty parking lot. What companies actually care about is whether you can handle the highway. Things like Git, GitHub for version control, writing unit tests, and understanding how CICD pipelines actually work. And a great place to start for this is Free Code Camp's Git and GitHub guide and Code Academy's free CICD intro course. Three, learn how to talk. It is so sad, but a lot of people in computer science and in tech do not know how to talk properly. Like they can code in Java, Python, these coding languages, but when it comes to human language, that's where they suck at. Learning how to talk, soft skills, communication, using your hands, creating an elevator pitch, those are fundamental skills that university, frankly, does not teach you especially in computer science. In fact, I know so many people who are way smarter than me in university who knew how to code since they were like six years old, but they couldn't talk properly. They couldn't talk to recruiters. They couldn't pass a behavioral interview because they just weren't personable. So to become a software engineer, what you really need to do is create an elevator pitch. This is a 30 to 40 second spiel about yourself where you establish who you are, what your background skills are and experience, and what opportunities you're seeking. Once you learn the art of pitching yourself and talking to people normally, then comes the stage of doing this at mass scale, where you go to networking events, hackathons, LinkedIn DMing alumni, and building up relationships. And over time, slowly but surely, you'll build up a huge network and opportunities will be coming to you in the door. Or learn system design. Computer science in university pretty much never covers how to build systems that scale in the real world. But in software engineering, the system design interview is one of the most popular and famous interviews. If you were going to design Spotify, what architecture would you use? Or if you're dealing with a high traffic environment like Netflix, would you use a content delivery network? Or how would you use a load balancer to allow the system to be performant? In fact, given that AI can write a lot of code right now, the true value of a software engineer is in the designing and 
and architecting of systems. So if you can learn this early on, even if you're a student, that will put you ahead of so many people, even potentially ahead of some senior engineers. And for this, I recommend you check out Grokking the System Design Interview and Designing Data Intensive Applications to learn this. Five is experiment with AI tools. And this is something that a lot of computer science curriculums are actually really far behind on. It's almost like they're afraid of AI because they don't experiment enough. In fact, they teach you AI theory, like how AI works, but they don't want you to use sometimes tools like GPT, Claude, or Cursor because it's cheating. But the problem that I have with this is in the real world, say at companies like Amazon or Google, you use AI tools on a daily basis to create things, and through that, you learn and develop even more. But if universities prevent you from using it, sure, they might be helping you learn in one way, but they're actually stopping you from learning in a whole nother way. And to be honest, there just needs to be a whole redoing of a lot of curriculums to support AI learning rather than avoiding it. But between me and you, please use AI. Tools like Copilot is a great starting point as an AI pair programmer. I really love using tools like Cursor because they help you go through your code base and develop cool projects in seconds. Warp is like an AI terminal, so you don't deal with any messy terminal commands. And as a software engineer, I can do so much more with AI than without. And also on this point, speaking of AI, I know there's a lot of anxiety right now. Will AI replace software engineers? Is computer science still worth it if AI is gonna take over? The reality is, AI I will replace software engineering before computer science. I mean, obviously. Software engineering is narrow, which makes it easier for AI to target. We've already seen companies scale back hiring, like Salesforce, because of AI coding. I've used Cursor at work, and trust me, things that used to take hours are now done in minutes. That's why software engineering is more at risk, especially if you don't upskill. Computer science, on the other hand, is the backbone of everything. It's not just coding, it's the foundation of computing, cyber, data, networking, operating systems, even AI and machine learning. The algorithms that power AI are computer science. The security systems that protect our digital world are computer science. You can't replace computer science with AI because computer science creates AI. And that's why, even though it doesn't map directly to a single job, it's depth and breadth make it a great major to pursue long term. Well, that's about all I have in this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're interested in my absolutely free tech newsletter, link will be down below in the description. And if you're interested in what software engineers do on a day-to-day -day basis, you might like this video right here.